education is a vital component for any nation and the education level of a country indicates how developed the country is because only the educated population can lead to better capital formation. Education is the pathway to any nation building enterprise and it gives people the skill they need to help themselves out of poverty or into prosperity. Taiwo Oke is a seasoned educationist whose aim is to provide comprehensive service and assist with all areas of education. As an alumnus of the Pan, prestigious Pan-Atlantic University and a president scholar of the innovation and teaching at the University of South Wales, London, her experience cuts across helping to improve employee performance by honing skills and knowledge, identifying trends to prevent future skill gaps, helping to develop consistent learning, developing digital competence in schools and colleges. Welcome, Taiwo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank honoring you. our invitation. Thank you. Now, <laughs> we cannot exhaust the topic of <coughs> when education. it comes to Never. education. Yes. And like we rightly read from the script, any serious nation that wants to develop must take education seriously. We coined the topic, is education enough to transform life and build a nation? We coined it in a way, not because we do not know the answers, but we want to drive a conversation. What are your thoughts on education as it is currently? And, and societal development. Yes, and societal, nation building. Nation building, yes. Education in Nigeria is, has been a bit you know, backwards, uh, let me use that word. And that's because it hasn't been our focus. And I think the nation is, the state at which the nation is now is going to be better if we focus more on education. Because education helps to shape people's perspective. Education helps to train minds. Education helps to create. It helps people to innovate. It helps people think positively and to be able to do things on their own. So I think the more we focus on education, the better the people become. And the more people don't have to be guided in doing things, the more they can reason themselves think themselves, take initiatives, and do things the proper way. All right, so from your, because um, I'll let um, Sanzi and Lamy come in, from your work that you've done over the years extensively in, in the educational space, what would you say are the current challenges specific when it comes to education in Nigeria? OK, the challenges in education in Nigeria are a lot. And some of them, I would be mentioning just a few. One is staff training. Hmm. Most teachers are not, you know, so qualified. trained. They don't understand what education means. And you see people getting into education because they need a job, not because they are passionate about it and not because they are trained about it. So I think we have to focus on staff training and we also have to focus, we have to you know, have bodies that regulate things. Because mm -hmm. where there is, like they say, where, where there, is, there is lawlessness, where there are no bodies that regulate things. And I think if we focus on those things, education is going to be better and staffs are going to improve. Another challenge is schools don't take, you know, schools don't take education seriously. Schools just, schools don't teach. They don't inform. They only go by what they have known in a, you know, for a long time. And that's a problem. You know, the world keeps changing every day. And I think with the way the world is changing, we have to be dynamic. We have to be innovative. We have to, we have to do things better. We have to look at other places. We have to look at the West and see what they are doing and see how the world is moving. <coughs> see the trends and we have to follow it. That's, mm. that's, that's where we would get there. Well, you talked about the regulatory uh, bodies. bodies. I, I think we do have some. We have some, yes. Yeah, the Union of Teachers being one of it and a couple of a labor... Con uh, Particularly what? the Ministry of Education. Yeah, yes. Ministry of Education, thank you. But it's like they're dormant. The only time we ever hear about them is, oh, NUT is about to go on strike. That's it. That's the only time we hear about them. So do you have any information on what exactly they are doing to make these bodies effective? I, I, I wouldn't say they're dormant. I would say maybe they're overwhelmed because there's, there are a lot of problems and they have, they've not been equipped to be able to solve problems effectively. Like, you know, we, you, the government has to equip them better to be able to 
face heads on these challenges. Sorry and to cut you. So what's okay. the what's the role of the Ministry of Education? Because that is a parent, the, reg, the principal uh, regulatory mm. body. The yeah, NUT that you mentioned is just an association of teachers. Mm. Yeah. The, the principal uh, regulatory body is the Ministry of Education. Yeah. So what is what, what are they doing? If you tell me that, um, if you tell us that they're, they're overwhelmed, what are they doing? They're working. They're still working. But they have so much on their hands. You know, like I said, there are a lot of problems to be solved. And mm -hmm. it's not a problem that was generated in a day. So they, they can't solve all the problems in a day. But they work at it daily and every time. They are working on schools. And also, we, we know the number of schools keep increasing. Why? And because the, Nigeria is getting more populated. No, I don't where. believe so. Ah, she, I think I believe so. Well, I think because Nigeria is. Be, no, no, no. I think no, I, I, think I, I, I believe so. I strongly disagree. No, I, I agree with you. But I, but I want to come in from the angle of, you know, when we're talking, are we talking generally or we're talking in some Lagos. states? Because I know in Lagos State, regulatory bodies are doing a lot. They are doing a lot. They are doing a lot. I don't know about other schools, but the schools my children um, graduated from before they moved to secondary school, they had a lot of regulatory bodies coming every day to check what you know they were doing, especially in Lagos State. I don't know about any other state because I don't live in other, Ooh, um, in other state. Hold on, let me, <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> but that's not why she is not a representative of the government. So we are not going to put her on that spot to, to answer for the question. I was going to say question. that what happened to those children in Lagos Island? Hold on. That's, it's, that's what I'm saying. She's not a representative of, um, of the government. Job. But from, according to the UN, right, they said funding you know, has been one of the major challenges when it comes to education. And you have lived, and, I mean, sorry, you have done a bit of, um, what's it called, um, international studies on, as in, in your own career path mm -hmm. that you, when you branched into the academic space and all of that. What would you say is, you know, is, um, is the clear difference when it comes to studying, you know, it, as education, it is right now in Nigeria and abroad. What would you say the difference is? Do you mean as regards funding? Yes, as regards, as regards investing in education. Yes. As a structure, yeah. Okay. For Nigeria, I see clearly that education is not our focus. Because when you look at the budget and you see how much allocation is being, you know, diverted. Yeah, because specifically they said, according to um, Daily Trust, that 8.4% is what is allocated to uh, what's it called to education. What's but the, the suggested recommended budget should be at least 26%. 26%. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah, go ahead. So as when you look at that, that alone affects a lot of things. And that alone handicaps a lot of people, a lot of regulatory bodies. Because when you divert like just one third of the amount you are meant to divert in education in it, then obviously you can't you can't expect you know to divert that little and get so much done and get results, 100% results. Because, okay. Okay, um, you were saying that uh, I believe that even at that 8%, if it's utilized properly, we can achieve a lot. You know why? Because the private sector is doing the job of the government in that area. There are a lot of private schools. So what are they doing with the money? <laughs> so the, pri the, the, the public schools available are not much. So with that 8%, they can still achieve a lot. Actually, a lot of private schools are not paying fees. Mm -hmm. It's like free education. I think public that. schools. A, a lot of, yeah, <coughs> sorry, Excuse public me. schools. Okay. A lot of them are not paying How many school are there? fees. Oh, there are a lot of public schools in Nigeria. I mean, no, let's, let's, okay, look, let's, let's look beyond Lagos. Lagos. Don't, don't, I know don't think in, Lagos, in the east, are you always there are a couple Lagos. of them, and then in okay. the north, and some of them, their school fees are maybe like 2,000 there and, and then they have That's all these teachers. But have you been to those schools? Of course, I, I have. I have been uh, school. So what are we saying? What I would say is for private schools, private schools know how to generate revenue internally. Yeah. And you can't use that to compare it percent. Like, for instance, your child in a private school, in a class, a particular class, won't pay the same as the same school fees as a child in a public school. Mm -hmm. And that way, private schools are generating revenue for themselves, and they can do a lot. No, that's, that's not, why that's they not can what do I a mean. Lot. What are you trying to say? You are putting our guests. She's not a she's government. Not a government. I'm sorry. Don't, don't put out. She's not Hang on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, please, let us bring it down to 
how do you think education can solve nation building hmm. and how can it transform lives? And what are the ways that we are educating our children right now that is wrong? And how can we educate them better? Okay. Education can solve nation building because it helps to transform minds. Absolutely. You know, Beauty education capacity. helps helps to change people from the inside out. It's not it's not just the physical. It's about how people think. It's about how people act. Like, um, you know, for instance, a tanker fell today and people were going there to get fuel. Mm -hmm. Education tells you, no, this is wrong. There's, there's a sixth sense in you that it activates. So it's about mind renewal. Education helps to renew people's minds. Then apart from that, education helps you to, to be innovative and to be creative. You know, you can, you, you're not waiting for the government to solve all the problems because the government won't be able to do that. But in developed countries, you know, education helps to, it helps you to, to be able to create solutions. You can think outside the box. You can do things. You can do things in your space. And that's, that's what education does. And the other question was... So what are you currently doing now in terms of thinking outside the box to solve this problem? So you're currently training teachers? Training teachers, training okay. school owners, training administrators. And how has that been so far in terms of success rates? Has how... Where have you met them and where, where are they currently? It has been effective because for most of the teachers, I realize that they don't even know the basics. So as little as, and, and I say that no training is little, as little mm -hmm. as personal effectiveness, how to set goals. You know, the new year is coming now. If teachers know how to set goals, that's when they can tell the children how to set goals. If teachers know how to plan their time and prioritize, that's when they can educate children on that. So mm -hmm. that has been effective our own little way. And you know, it has made them more productive. It has made their work more structured and yeah. better structured. You know, they can plan their time. They can plan the children, plan for the children. They can guide the children better. And they can but, instruct. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We are up. We've run out of time. Don't mind. <laughs> Thank you so much, Taiwo Oke, for joining us. Uh, up next, we have our next guest join us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>